Hey, what's going on everyone? Vega here for Serpent X Tech, and in this video, we are going to be reviewing the ID Sonics MVME M.2 SSD. Now it is rated for PCIe Gen 4x4, and we know that Gen 5 is currently out, but these speeds, at least Gen 3 and Gen 4 for the average gamer, uh, you're not gonna see much of a difference uh, in performance. It does have uh, a, a statement here that the readout performance or speed is 7,000 megabits per second, but it doesn't say anything about writes. It does have 3D NAND flash, which is standard, and its size is 2280, which is par for the course. Now, what you actually get in this package is a little booklet here that gives you basic information as well as how to install the heatsink because it does come with one. And you can see when we're looking at our GN mod mat, it does comply with the 2280 standard or 22 millimeters. Now, these SSDs or NVMe drives uh, usually run standard uh, DRAM chips, IC, so on and so forth. But we could see two chips here, if we look on the side here, that the sticker is covering. And I think the controller's on the back, if you look there at the butt, you can see a little bit of a hump. I think that's the controller. I'm not gonna rip off the stickers just yet because we wanna install this in a system and make sure we could test out the performance claims of the marketing from the ID Sonics team. Uh, now the heat sink, what's interesting is most heat sinks for NVMe or SSDs only give you uh, the top heat sink, which this top heat sink doesn't have a lot of surface area, but that's not all. They give you two sets of thermal pads for the front and for the back. So we got one for the, the main heat sink that's gonna go over top, and then we have another one for the bottom of it that's gonna help cool it. Besides that chip that we just saw, that little bulge in the middle there, there's not much on the back here or the bottom to keep cool it's all going to be up top and you can see the heat sink it doesn't have much surface area it's very thin so i mean if this was a gen 5 drive i don't think this would be enough gen 4 should be fine but we'll look at the thermals as we get it installed additionally i want to see how this performs in an external uh ssd enclosure or nvme enclosure uh, with a type c connection so let's go ahead and get that installed and see what the performance is Quick heads up, whenever you install a new drive of any type into your system, go straight to Disk Management by right-clicking your Windows Start menu and selecting Disk Management. When you first do, there's going to be a quick window that pops up. Just leave it on the normal format or whatever it auto-selects. Hit OK and then scroll on down to where you see the disk. Right-click New Simple Volume. Next, on all the options, it's going to be a little bit less than one terabyte, but still be about close. Give it a drive letter of your choice and then give it a name of your choice. In this case, we're gonna call it the ID Sonics i7000 Pro. And then hit next, and you can name it whatever you want. And now our drive is good to go. So let's run some benchmarks and show you that data. All right, so we got some data here for you. Unfortunately, we weren't able to hit the uh, marketing of seven gigabits per second or 7,000 megabits per second, but we were on average anywhere from uh, 6,000 to 6,500 on the reads and about 5,500 to 6,000 on the right. So that roughly equates to 6.5 gigabits per second reads, 6,000 or six gigabits per second writes on multiple tests on multiple systems. And I even tested the external drives. Now the temperatures were sitting pretty good, max temperature of 49, it didn't get too hot. Average temperature of around 45 between multiple systems using the heat sink provided. Uh, and on an external hard drive enclosure, I wouldn't recommend using or bothering with anything Gen 4 or higher because you're going to be limited to that one gigabit per second reads and writes. You might as well get a Crucial or some Gen 3 drive that's around 1,000 uh, megabits per second reads and writes or one gigabit per second reads and writes. However, the ID Sonics team did a pretty good job of pricing this thing because it's only 70 bucks for one terabyte, which is actually very competitive. Again, the marketing says, not only on the package, but on the Amazon page of 7,000 or seven gigabits per second, but I wasn't able to hit that in multiple systems throughout my testing. Maybe I have uh, one that's only 500 megabits sh uh, short of the, the marketing term. I'm not too worried about it because it's so, uh, or it's priced so competitively. I believe the microcontroller, by the way, is the Marvel one, the 88SS1322. When I peel back the label just a little bit, uh, I don't quote me on that. It could be uh, one of these other ones, but I do believe it is the Marvel P uh, microcontroller that is being used on this SSD. And if we look for a particular drive that reminds me of this thing, the Verbatim VI7000G, they have the two terabyte and one terabyte, and the speeds are roughly the same. 
Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if we have the same manufacturer or maybe similar manufacturers using the similar processes because the verbatim one terabyte, you know, does around 7.2 gigabits per second reads or around 52 or 5.2 uh, gigabits per second writes, which is about on par. But if you note here, uh, at least on this website, this drive is $98, whereas the ID Sonics is 70. So you could save some money and get similar reads and write speeds. But again, don't use it on an external uh, enclosure or NVMe enclosure um, because you're just going to be wasting the performance that you could be having by slapping this into a PCIe Gen 4x4 uh, M.2 slot. But that is all the data that I have for this drive. Wasn't able to hit the marketing term, but I think we can overlook that because of its competitive pricing. However, I want to hear from you down in the comment section below. So do me a favor on the way out. Hit that like button. Get subscribed, hit the notification bell to stay up to date, as well as check out additional links in the description to help support the channel and what we do here. And you just have yourself a wonderful day. Take care. I'll catch you next one.